part two of our general hand tool review. Yesterday I covered hammers, I covered wrenches, pliers, several other different types of tools that you'd normally find in any toolbox. Today we're going to continue. This is part two. Disclaimer number one. I don't claim to have all the knowledge of the universe. I'm going to give you the names that I understand them to be. Common names, technical names, as to the best of my ability. I've only been teaching now for about 30 years. But I'm going to tell you, I learn something new every day. I forgot one thing yesterday. It's this right here. These are, let me get my saw out of the way so you can see this better. Whoops, there we go. These are needle nose cutting pliers. And again, they're pliers. These are pinching. Okay, you can do that. They also have the diagonal wire cutter in here that you can use to cut wire. Forgot to have these yesterday when I was talking about the different pliers and diagonal wire cutters that are out there. Okay, we're going to start today with saws. We're going to do hand saws because hand saws are a couple of those tools that everybody needs to know. All right, there are two common kinds of saws based on the teeth. Saws are measured two ways, length of the blade, but more importantly, the number of teeth per inch. Generally speaking, the bigger the teeth, it becomes a rip saw. Designed, and I don't think you can see this if I hold this up here for you. Let's see here. If you look down the blades though, you'll notice that one blade goes one way, whoops, there we go. One blade goes one way and one blade goes another way. A rip saw is designed to do just that. It is designed to rip through the wood and not leave you a very nice cut. On the other hand, let me put this one up here so you can see it. You'll notice that this one has more teeth per inch more teeth per inch indicates that this becomes what we call a cross cut saw. Okay, cross cut exactly that. It's designed to cut across the grain of a piece of wood. Cross cut. A ripping saw can certainly cut across a piece of wood across the grain. However, a ripping saw is designed to work best when you're going with the grain. And a crosscut saw will actually work pretty good going with the grain also. However, this saw was designed with the smaller teeth to give you a nice, clean, smooth cut and to go across the grain of wood. And if you don't know what the grain of wood is, you need to look at my uh, video on wood and identifying different woods and defects. All right, so. Crosscut saw, little tiny teeth. Rip saw, big shark teeth. A couple other saws for you here that we keep in the shop. <coughs> All right. This is a hacksaw. Hacksaw. This blade is made to cut across metal. And you do it with a hacking motion. This is also my preferred saw for cutting plastic pipe, PVC type pipe. Gives you a nice clean cut. It does it nice and easy. You can use any of the other saws to cut plastic pipe, by the way. Or you can go and buy yourself that handy dandy nice plastic pipe cutting tool. Saws work just as well. Hacksaw, metal, and we use it again on pipe. Okay, hacksaw, H-A-C-K. All right, this one here is called a coping saw, and I believe I have a video on using the coping saw. Coping is the decorative piece of wood up in the top of a roof. If you look at some roofs around town, especially in some of the older houses, you'll notice that some of the wood towards the top, towards the peak, 
whoops, the peak of the roof has got some decoration in there. Usually that was created using what we call a coping saw because that particular piece of wood along the, the ridge, the edge of a roof, is called the coping. This saw, you can turn it so that you can cut irregular lines. Irregular lines are just another woodworking of way of saying curves. But that's what this saw is. It's a coping saw. And then finally, most of us have one of these lying around the house. All this is is a blade holder. One of the things that happens with hacksaw blades is that a lot of times they'll break. They're very brittle. They're not made to bend. And so this device was invented so that you could put your hacksaw blade in. If I can get this to open back up like I want it to. There we go. So you can put your hacksaw blade in. Oops, I got it going the wrong way. And you had a convenient holder for small projects. Maybe you need to do the inside of a piece of trim. Maybe you have just a small pipe that you need to cut. This will do it. I use this in my video on how to cut or um, break plexiglass. This works really well on plexiglass. All right, so there's your saws that we're going to cover. Now let's look at some more cutting tools that we have. And excuse me for pulling all of this stuff out out here. But I do want to kind of keep everything together. All right, cutting tools. Box cutters come with ergonomic grips. Inside you can usually store more razor blades. The regular blade. And some people will call this an exacto knife. I've referred to this as a box cutter. Um, razor blade holder. Razor blade cutter. Uh, the most common name is box cutter. Now, this is also a box cutter. However, you'll notice the blade is hooked. That is an asphalt shingle blade or a roofing blade in there made to get up underneath felt or roofing shingles so that you can cut them and separate them. This particular knife here, this is a linoleum knife. Linoleum still used a lot in flooring and this is able to get up underneath and cut. I tried to use this on the uh, plexiglass, did not work well but this works well on a lot of other applications. It is beveled on both sides, so that makes this an incredibly sharp instrument. All right, now. These three, and I apologize again. I've had tools that have been abused and I haven't gotten around to cleaning everything up yet. Old timers will call these tin snips. Okay? Tin snips. T I N after the metal. You'll also hear these called sheet metal shears. And I believe on my test I call them sheet metal shears or metal shears. They are industrial scissors made for cutting sheet metal. Okay, these are straight ones. And then we have curved ones so that you can cut. Another name for these that you will hear out there depending on where you live in the United States, these are also called aviation shears. These were used and are still used in aircraft manufacturing where aluminum or polycarbonates or other sheet material that needs to be cut is used. Okay, so aviation shears, tin snips, Metal shears, all of those names will work. And this has a handy dandy lock on it. There are right hand and left hand versions. And then we have this one that's 
curved so that you can lay this one flat and cut in a straight line. And as you can see, these are quite large. All right, so all of these are the same thing. Tin snips, metal shears, sheet metal shears, aviation scissors, aviation shears, all of those names apply. And while we're talking about cutting tools, let's look at a few more cutting tools that we have here. Okay, oops, put that one in right there. We have objects that are called chisels. An all metal chisel like this is called a cold chisel. This is to be used when metal is cold. This is used with a hammer. Right? It is metal. You may plink on it with a metal hammer. These two, anything basically that has a plastic handle falls into the wood chisel category and is made to be cutting wood. And with that being said, let me get my piece of wood up here that I can use to demonstrate. Now, there is a debate out there, especially on Facebook. I had an email the other day on Facebook from a, uh, for a contest, woodworkers. And they showed the chisel, I think it was this way or this way, one of the ways. And people started commenting that the, the chisel was being shown incorrectly. It all depends on what you want to do with the chisel. But this is made to go along and peel the wood up. Now, this has a metal button on the back, which means I can tap on this with a hammer if I want to. This nice Irwin wood chisel, and again, there we go. I can use this to peel the wood up. Now, depending on what I want to do with it, if I want to go deep into the wood, I would leave this. So I can go along and I can peel that up. However, if I want to control the depth that I want to go at, I'll turn it over and put the beveled side on top of the wood and then just go along. And I'm trying to do this without the wood being clamped down. But I can peel that off very nicely just by running it along and controlling the depth. If I don't mind how deep I go, I can run that in there and it'll just keep digging into the wood. So, <clears throat> excuse me, cold chisel made to be used with a hammer, wood chisel, plastic handle indicates it's a wood chisel, it's made to be held in your hand, the metal button on the back indicates that I can use a hammer with it, wood chisel, plastic handle, no metal button, the only thing I can use on this is my bare hand or possibly I could use my leather mallet to gently tap on this on the back side. All right, so there's your chisels. Have a putty knife and it even says on here, it's a putty knife. This is used to scrape off old paint you can use this to scrape decals off your windshields. You can use this to scrape paint off the walls. Uh, I use this around the shop to get the gum off the floor that's been on the floor now for years. I think I've got the floor just about gum free now. But that's what this is for. It's for being sliding it along and you use this, you hold this in your hand, finger down, go along. Again, no metal on the back. This is not meant to be struck with a hammer. Well, let me do this last one. These Fiskers here, these are actually pruning shears for plants. These can also be used for plastic pipe. I believe this one was used in the art class for trimming plastic and making designs. 
Um, it's been in the shop, but it's got some um, glue on it from the glue sticks. So that's what leads me to believe that it was used in the art class. I use this for pruning my plants. Now let's talk about our pry bars. <coughs> okay, what's the difference between a pry bar and a crowbar? Anybody? Pry bar and a crowbar? They're the same thing. There will be some that will tell you, no, a crowbar is this or a crowbar is that. That's fine, whatever. Okay, this is a Stanley Wonder Bar. This is used in construction. This is made to get under the edge of a nail. You can also hook on a nail, hook it and pull back. It's got another wedge down here for hooking into a, a nail. This one, you can tap on this with a hammer. This is made to pry things apart quickly and without worrying about if you're going to leave it nice and neat when you're done. If you're not worried about uh, nails, screws, whatever, use this. Not a problem. <coughs> All right, pry bars. This just has a nice wedge on the end of it. It's at a curved angle so I can get up underneath or I can lever that and pull out. Length of the handle, length of the handle indicates that I have more power. That's all it is. Smaller, closer in work, uses more power to make it work than this one if I can get this in at the same um, object that I'm trying to get apart. Pry bar, P R Y bar, pry bar. Now, some of the other miscellaneous tools that we have <coughs> chisels and punches. I'm not worried about you knowing the different kinds of chisels, other than that you're going to take care of them. Chisels are used for cutting, they're used for prying things apart. We have punches for centering, uh, aligning. You can use these to punch a hole through a piece of material. We have all different ones. Center punch, that's this one here with the pyramid on it. Let me get this up in front of you there. See that? You can use this to set a spot to start a drill on a piece of metal. All right, so chisels and punches. Let's go ahead and do the files while I'm here. <coughs> okay, files. Rule number one on a file. Let's see if I can get the handle off of one of these. Nope, I've got them on too tight. There we go. Rule number one on any kind of a file. Never use a file without a handle. While we're here, this end of the file, where the handle is supposed to go, this is called the tang. T-A-N-G, tang, just like the old-fashioned orange juice drink. My grandmother had that stuff. The astronauts used it, by the way. That was the marketing tool. Always have a handle. If you don't have a handle and you're using this and you're pushing, Guess where that handle ends up going? Always into the fleshy part of your hand. Blood will be spilt. Blood will be spilt and you will be very, very unhappy. All right, files. Let's start with the one in my hand. This is round. Therefore, it's called a round file. These come in different diameters. And all files are meant to go one way. They work the best if you go one way, even if they're a double acting file. And how do you know they're a double acting file? Well, if you look at these two files, let me see if I can get that up there for you. You'll notice that the lines only go one direction. This file is meant to be used one way. This one, you'll notice lines go in two different directions. This is called a double acting file. I can use it both ways. 
However, a file is a two-handed tool. A lot of people don't get that for whatever reason. A file is meant to be held in one hand and the other holding the handle so that you can use both hands to guide this over what it is that you're filing. And a file is meant to remove a little bit of material so that you can adjust things to fit. Okay, now this particular one is shaped like a triangle. Therefore, this is a triangle file. Round file, triangle file. <coughs> oh, and this is just another handle here. This one is half round. Therefore, this one is a half round file. Now, on this one, it's double acting on one side. You can see the lines go two different directions. But on the other side, the curved side, it's single acting. It's only got the lines going one direction. Half round file. And then finally, and this one's not very clean, and excuse me just a second, it's a little warm in the shop today. This is a flat file. You will also hear this called, and basically it's old timers. I have not heard too many people use this that are my age. But you may also hear this referred to as a bastard file. Where it got that name, can't tell you, don't know. It is called that, however. And again, this one is a single acting file. It's meant to be held, two hands, and guided across what it is that you're filing. All files are two-handed instruments and you should use them that way. All right, so all files have these little teeny tiny itsy bitsy little teeth. Okay, but I also have this. Look at that, big teeth. Whoa. This is called a wood rasp. Rasps, R-A-S-P-S, -S, rasps have large teeth across them. This is a half round wood rasp. This is meant to be used on wood only. If you use this on metal, like this one has from time to time, all you're going to do is rip the teeth off and just ruin it. This one looked much worse before I got a hold of it and I've had a chance to do some reconditioning. Again, this is a two-handed instrument. You have much better control over what you're doing. Okay, so there's our files out of the way. some other tools that you may run across from time to time include our drills and drill bits. Alright, three basic kinds of drill bits that you need to be aware of. There are more. Okay, everything that I've got here is just what I have in the shop. And there are many more out there in the world. There's hundreds thousands of different tools for you to choose from. Okay, when you go to the store and you buy a set of drill bits, this one's falling out right here, these, like this, these are called twist drill bits. There are general purpose drill bits, there are wood drill bits, and there are metal drill bits. Okay, they're called twist drill because the way they work is by a twisting action. That's it. That's all there is to it. Twist drill bit. Now, those of you that work with wood may have a set of these. This poor abused tool is called a spoon bill or a spoon bit. You'll also hear this called a flat bit. I have heard that from time to time, but I call it a spoon. This is meant for the point to go into the piece of wood. It pulls down and then the sides are beveled. Okay, I 
if you can see that, yeah, they're beveled. And the bevel, as it's twisting, peels the wood away. The thing on using one of these, or the thing on using any of these, if you can, as you are about to drill through the other side, if you can stop and turn the piece over and come back in, you will get a much cleaner opening than if you just drill through. Okay, so regular bits, twist drill bits, spoon bit or flat. How about these? These are concrete or masonry bits. They are specifically designed to be used in concrete. Takes a while for them to get through, but the double helix here or the larger flat or land area, shoulder, that allows it to keep itself cleaner. Okay, they're made to be used in concrete. Can you use it in a piece of wood if you don't have anything else? Sure. Would I want to? Why? All right. We put our drills into a drill. It can be an electric drill with a cord, or in this case, this is a cordless hand drill. It's meant to be held in your hand. That's where the hand drill part comes from. Some of you may, grandma or grandpas have seen that. This, ladies and gentlemen, is called a bit brace. The bit goes in the working end. You tighten it in. And then you, I don't know if you can see this. Let me see if I can move you up a little bit. You brace this against you and you turn. And that's the action that makes this work. But that's what this end here is for, is for you to be able to put your hand on top of it and twist, or to brace it against you like that, and use your whole body to push in while you're twisting. This is called a bit brace. Levels. You'll hear these called different things and I'm not going to get into it. First off, they are what are called bubble levels. They're called a bubble level because inside of here, there you can see it going back and forth, there's a bubble, there's a liquid. It's usually some kind of alcohol liquid, like rubbing alcohol or it's uh, denatured water or something that's not going to grow algae if you leave it outside in the sun. These are used to measure three different things. You can do that on this one. This one, you can use it to measure what we call level. Okay, Level is horizontal. You can use this to measure up and down Okay, you can see the bubble in there. Up and down is called plumb. And this can be used to measure a 45 degree angle if you need to, to make sure that you have it on the level. And this would be more for railings for stairs, or maybe you're building a pole barn and you have to do it at a specific angle, but that's more about what that is for. Have I ever used the diagonal one? Probably not. But I have definitely used plumb, and I have definitely used level. And that up and down again, that's plumb, P-L-U-M-B, plumb. Oh, this little one right here, this is just a mechanics level. Okay, I call it that. Other people call it other things. Uh, could be just a, a work level, a mechanics level. It's got a nice magnet on the back side of it. Welder's level. The longer ones, like this nice brass one here, this wooden one, and again, this one measures level. 
and this one measures plumb. These I get more in and call these framing levels. Anything that's longer than about two feet, and this is two feet across, anything longer than this, and I call this a framing level. On here, they just call it a brass bound mahogany level. Useful for cement. Uh, these, anything that's wood, this has applications anywhere where it's uh, wet, uh, you don't want to uh, corrode anything. The metal ones, like the big long metal framing ones, those are more woodworking type levels there. Okay, so there's the levels. Let's see what else I have on my counter here. All right. These are more specialized tools. This is a pop rivet gun. This is the pop riveter. Here's the pop rivets. This is used for fastening pieces of metal together. Uh, I had a student last year that broke one of my student chairs in the classroom. Had to pop rivet it back together. This particular set here is a tap and die set. Okay, tap and die. Die means to cut anything that goes around, and these are used to refinish, to recut nuts and bolts, bolt holes that are um, have been abused, torn up, have been stripped. And what happens then is you take one of these and you pop it in to the holder, tighten it in, we get ready. And we go from the top down. When it gets to the top, these part, and then it'll clean it as we go. Okay, so that's for doing bolts. You run it down. Oops, wrong side. Yep, it's sweaty in here today. Anyway, you run it down and it cleans the threads out is what it does. Okay, so that's a die. Get that back in. And then these are called taps. This is if the hole that the bolt goes in on your engine block or in the concrete or in the metal has been stripped out. You can run this back through and you can re-chase, that's what's called, chase out the threads. Now these come in, of course, machine and coarse thread. Machine thread is close together and coarse thread is far apart. So make sure you're using the correct tool for the job. And this one, of course, has been abused through the years and it's not quite all there anymore. But we're trying. I was able to go around the shop and find most of the pieces for this. Okay, so that's a tap and die set. Squares. Okay, we have squares. And if you do not use a square when you are building something, you're going to have all of your corners and all of your edges off. You need to use a square as often as you can. Now, the big squares like this, you'll notice there's two sets of numbers. There's a table in here for rafters and framing. Uh, we'll be going into that a little bit this year in class. But generally speaking, this is meant to see if something is square. If everything touches on both sides, then it's square. I call this a framing square or just an old-fashioned square. Okay, but a technical name, I believe, is a framing square. Okay. 
This device here is a Swanson Speed Square. Now, Speed Square is the generic name. You will find these made by other people, uh, imported from other countries. They all work the same way. This can be used to lay out. It's got this hook here in the bottom where you can hook this on the edge of a board so that you can lay out straight lines cutting across two by material or one by material. You can do angles. This also has a protractor. Down here we have a notch at the bottom and along the bottom here are the degrees from 0 to 90. So you can use this as a protractor. You can use this to do rafters. You can do this for hips and valleys. That's another thing on rafters. The little notches here, you can lay this on the edge of a board and if you need to lay a line all the way down a board, you put your pencil in there and slide it along. The diamond indicates it is halfway across this. This is seven inches across here. The diamond's right in the middle so that you can lay a line down just like that. This has a lot of different applications. It is a very versatile tool. Not that expensive if you look online and go to the different online shopping areas where you can find one of these. Okay, Speed Square. This is a tri-square. This one can do oops, 90 degrees. This one can be used to do angles, as you can see there. This one can be used as a level. Okay, so three functions. That's where the tri comes from. Tri-square. have a chalk line. Chalk line is really easy, nifty to use. This is for if you're doing panels or you need to lay a line down, you take it, lay it, pick it up, flick it, and you get a line. It's hard to do when you're by yourself. This works off of chalk. You go and buy the chalk at the hardware store. Powdered chalk goes right in that container coats the line as it goes out. Easily erasable. Let's see what else I have up my sleeve here. Here's another tap and die set drills. This came with one of ours. This is called an easy out. You can get the screw extractor. You can drill into the top of a bolt or a screw then you can use this. These are cut so that you can use this to back out any bolts or screws that may have broken off or be caught in there. Okay, It's called an easy out set. Here its technical name is screw extractor life-saving tips and then it's got that right there. Also have in our handy dandy supply of stuff we have mirrors so that you can use the mirrors to see what's going on down in somewhere that you can't actually see in. Have used these a few times it also has the one with the magnet on the end of it. That has come in handy also, especially when you drop nails and screws. Almost done. Wire brushes used in the welding area, but you can also use this for a lot of things. Cleaning up metal parts, nuts and bolts that you want to clean up if they're covered in rust or dirt. This is a concrete trowel. Now this one's actually a brick laying trowel because of the point here. Uh, there's several videos on YouTube on using a brick laying trowel. Make sure and check them out. This one looked a lot worse before I cleaned it up. Okay, wire brush, brick laying trowel. And then that brings me to the final items. All right. 
get everything set up here. Finally, you need to keep your area nice and clean. This is called a bench brush. Brushes look like this. Okay, this is a bench brush. It's used to clean the top of a bench off. Do not be afraid of these. They don't bite. See, stick my finger in there. Doesn't bite. I'm not being hurt. Don't be afraid to use these to clean up your work area. We have several in the shop. Most shops have a few of these lying around. Use them. A dust broom. Brooms have bristles. That's why it's called a broom. This is a dust broom. It's meant to be used to sweep the floor. And then we have an item called a, wait for it, dust mop. Now mops are made out of braided string. Mops are used to get the finer stuff off the floor. We use a dust mop especially in the woodworking area to get the sawdust and debris off of the floor. Again, don't be afraid to use these. And finally, this is a safety face shield. Now more than ever in the time of COVID, these come in quite handy. You can use this on your face to protect you from flying debris. Goggles, these protect your eyes. Now, I'm guilty of pulling the vents out. The vents are here to keep things from flying into it. If you do that and open it up, I don't have too much of a problem with it. But if you pull these completely out, I am going to have an issue. Yes, it gets hot in here. Yes, you can fog up. Can you take these off and go bare-eyed in the shop? Absolutely not. You will face a consequence. And then finally, these are called safety glasses. Safety goggles big and bulky, safety glasses, lean and sleek. When you're in the shop, you must have something in front of your eyes. We can replace a finger. We can sew your hand back on. We can give you a bionic appendage, arm or leg. I can give you an ear uh, implant so that you can hear. It's called an ocular implant, or a colloquial uh, now I can't talk. But there are ear, ear implants to attach to your auditory nerves so that you can hear. The one thing we haven't been able to replace yet is your eyes, your optic nerve. Science has perfected it to the point where people can see light and dark. They can see fuzzy shapes at a distance. But they do not have the depth of vision that you have. Can't see the colors. We want to protect your eyes. Make sure you have one of these in front of you. Okay, so that concludes the general hand tools. There will be videos. There will be videos that will go into the different machines around the shop and some of the other tools on how to use them. Uh, Hope you'll tune in for those. If you're watching this in any other school around the country, I'm glad I was able to help explain a few of these tools for you and give you the names. The quiz is also going to be a YouTube quiz. There are 50 of these that you will need to identify. If you've paid any attention at all to the videos, parts one and two, you will pass the quiz without any problems whatsoever. So until next time, have a great day.